Hey, it's Tuesday and I'm rushing to get ready to go to the doctor. I wasn't able to do anything but jump in the shower. Had to call 911 on Mama this morning and I got to ride in the ambulance with her. She's very lethargic, she's wheezing, she's starting to cough. I was afraid pneumonia was setting in and they never did x-ray her hip to make sure she didn't break it. And you know, going to the bathroom is a 30 minute trip and she's just in a lot of pain. She was, she's not eating and she wanted to go to the doctor because normally she don't want to. So I uh, got her in, got her checked in, uh, got my mom and my aunts and all up there, and I had my uh, best friend come and pick me up, bring me home, rushed to get in the shower, and now we're on our way to the foot surgeon, but they're releasing mama again. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why they won't keep her. It's just here what they're saying. When the elderly get sick, they just bring them home just to even the ambulance driver's like, how are y'all supposed to get her to the doctor tomorrow? She can't even get in and out of a car. So it's like they don't care no more. And I'm sorry, this is just very upsetting to me. You just try to help the best that you can. And it's like nobody else will do anything. And especially the hospitals. So I'll update y'all when I get back. All right, hi everybody. I know it looks like I'm sitting crooked. But I just had the camera just sitting on the dash of my car. The uh, hospital sent my mom back home, so she's back here. She is getting fluid built up on her lungs. They said it's just a little bit, but, and we know it's because, you know, she can't move that much. She's, she's in too much pain, she's hurting. So we keep, don't understand why the hospitals won't do nothing for her. And they don't even want her, us to give her anything. And she's in a lot of pain. You know, yes, we're exhausted. Yes, we're tired. Uh, my sister's been over here and it, because there has to be constant care and then someone constantly doing this. And, you know, we're having to do sponge baths and everything because I want to keep everything as clean as possible. You know, especially keep Mama all clean as possible and clean clothes and everything. And it's, it's a lot of work, but that's fine. But I just can't just this hospital care on the elderly I just don't I don't understand it I don't get it um, we had to call the ambulance this morning cuz it's like just like that she went downhill when you something last night when she went to sleep she gurgled and me and grub just sat in the kitchen I know how my kitchen and living room is and just watched her for hours she just kept making a gurgling noise and of course that scared us. And so this morning, she wouldn't eat, she wouldn't drink. You could wake her up and ask her a question and back out she'd go. And my sister had to leave to take uh, where she lives, her neighbor to school. And it ain't but a couple of minutes down the street. And that quick I called Grub. I said, get here quick, the ambulance is on the way. So the ambulance got here. I had my, well, I rode in an ambulance before because I was out of it, but they plopped me right in that front seat, running red lights and all, scared me to death. But um, got her to the hospital and I did make them x-ray her hip to make sure her hip wasn't cracked because her leg and all was swollen. Right back home they send you. So she goes to the orthopedic surgeon tomorrow, so... We'll find out if she's going to have to live like this for the rest of her life or what. Because they did say at the hospital that she's 85 and with dementia, that putting someone to sleep, that the anesthesia when they wake up, like their brain will never be right again. So there's some big decisions that has to be made. So I, not too long ago, got back from the foot doctor and I have a lot to think about um, he said he did more x-rays and I had x-rays from the previous and all he said was it's a mess he said your foot is so messed up he said I don't even know where to start and he said I'm not gonna even paint you a pretty picture because there's no pretty pictures that I can paint you on this he says it it just needs a major operation and this major operation he won't even do 
they will send me to a specialist that he said he would even go to, but it's where other people from different counties and states that they go to. My mom's like, where is that? And I forgot to even ask him, where's that at? Where am I going to have to go to have? That's option two. He said, but I am going to give you an option one. And I have to do one or two. I can't just keep it like this. So option one is here in our state, doctors usually have their own little surgery centers. And he said, I can go in there because I'm afraid of being put to sleep. It can go in there and um, just give me something to kind of where I'm asleep and I don't remember. It'll take about 20 minutes. He'll cut me in the same spot, take out all the hardware, clean out all the bone fragments. I'd be a month in a boot and a month recovery, a month to six weeks recovery. But knowing that that may not work and I have to do option two. He said, go into this knowing you may have to do option two. He says, but your foot, will it will be deformed um, if option one where he removes everything because there'll be no joint or nothing and my toe will shrink considerably down in my foot. There will still be pain, but that's option one. And knowing that if I do do option one, I may have to do option two. Option two is I go to that place and um, they will take a bone graft from either the heel of my foot or on my hip or they can use a bone bank. It'll be about that big. They'll go take all the hardware, everything out. They'll put that bone graft in, put plates, screws, metal, everything. And I'll be uh, e immobile, immobile, whatever that word is, for three months plus. No foot on the ground, no nothing. It's a long, hard recovery. But, um, and you have to go through, I'll be asleep, the surgery will last two hours or longer. And that's how long I'll be put to sleep. That scares me. But I have to do one or the other. He says, so I'm not painting you a pretty picture. I'm not, you know, it, either way. So he says, you know, think about it, but we need to get it fixed and we need to, you know, we need to kind of hurry up. So. Me and my husband talked, and I talked to my mom, and everything. I think I'm going to go with option one for now. Uh, yes, I've been crying, and I'm about to start crying now because the way my foot looks now, it will be severely deformed. And I won't be, um, I won't be able to walk a lot. The toe will flop. He said it'd just be floppy, shrunk. You know, now Mama kind of got me laughing. I'm like, Mama, now what if I trip and fall over my toe getting under me? So, that, but he said, go in knowing you still may have to do option two. It may not work. So, I think that's what we're going to go. And he said, how soon can we get you fixed? I said, well, how soon, you know? He said, I'm already got them the schedulers for the surgery to call you. So, the schedulers will be calling you. So, there's a lot going on right now. And I think the tears are a lot of, I'm exhausted. A lot's going on with Momo. And then I have to have this done. But he said, he pretty much told me that doctor that did this, that the second surgery that he did where he put the screw in there had grooves in it. So he put the grooves in the bone. Well, when that broke loose, he went back in there and drilled more out with a bone that was already not strong, and it cracked it. Because three weeks into that recovery, I remember I woke up in the middle of the night, my foot was in so much pain, I couldn't take it, pain medicine wasn't working. I called my doctor's office. They said that the doctor who did the surgery was out of state. But he had another doctor in, so I went there. He x-rayed it, and he said it's cracked. He said it has cracked through. Your bone is cracked now. 
where one of those rods are. He said, but I'm not going to make that decision. I'm going to wait and let the doctor come in and make it. And that's where this doctor today said, stop. He knew it was cracked. He knew it messed up right then. They should have put you in and removed all that hardware and fixed it right then. He said, I wouldn't have done it in the first place. He said, but right then, but where they didn't and <clears throat> the other doctor came back and dismissed it, that's where it has stemmed and progressively gotten worse. So that's very upsetting, and I almost didn't let that last doctor do the surgery, but I figured he did the ones before. So, anyway, I know I'm babbling, and I'm sorry, and a lot of people's already texting and sending private messages wanting to know. And to everyone, I'm sorry I haven't been watching your videos and showing the love. There's a lot of videos I love watching, but I just haven't had the time. It's, that's why I'm out here sitting in my car real quick. My sister's in there feeding Mama and my co little cousin, Bailey. Y'all remember her? She stopped by. And um, so they're in there, so I walked outside real quick because I don't want Mama hearing all this that's going on. So um, I walked out here real quick, but, but I will do some catching up. Just know right now we've got a lot on my, our plates, and we are just busy and exhausted. I try sometimes to take a little bit of break at night, and just maybe sneak 30 minutes to go back to my bedroom and watch a little bit, but then I, it, it's back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So, and my birthday's coming up Saturday. And I told my husband, I guess I just won't have a birthday this year, but that's okay. Anyway, I'm sorry I'm losing it. I'm going to go because I, we're just tired and we have a lot on our plate. I want to thank you for all the love and support. I really do appreciate it. And I'm sorry for the crying. I, I don't like people to see me cry. But you've all been wanting to know the update. So there's the update. And I promise I'll get some cooking videos up real soon. I do have a few that was filmed. Some in advance that I just haven't had time to upload. But... I want to thank y'all for all the love and support that you've so, shown and given. I love you all, and I appreciate you all. One more thing, um, when he talked about the surgery, I told him that we had a little mini trip planned to Dollywood at the end of October. Well, I said we had a mini trip planned. He said, where to? And I said, Dollywood. And he put his hand on my shoulder. He said, honey, you will never be able to walk long distances again. So, I'll rent a scooter. Um... So, anyway, I just thought that was funny. And when he found out that I made candles and cakes, he made me promise that I'd make him a candle. So, Mama said, you better remember, and we'll go ahead and make him a candle. So, he was very nice, very, very kind, very understanding, and was very straightforward. So, thanks for all the love, and I'm sorry I'm crying. But just ignore that. We're just tired. So, love y'all.